welcome and thanks for joining us for this library information session. Some introductions to start. My name is Jamie Morris. I'm chair of the Port Lakes Library Board. With me here are Jamie Anderson, the Port Lakes Library CEO, and Craig Shanks, who is the city's director of community services. In the audience, among you are a number of library board members, I think five, six all together. Uh, several councillors who are joining us, including uh, Kathleen Seymour Fagan and a number of library staff. So, thanks again for, for joining us for this. The purpose of this meeting is to share with you the information that has shaped our plans to enhance library services for Bob Cage and area residents and to explain the direction being taken. We're going to start by going over the roles of council, the city, and the library board with respect to libraries. Jimmy Anderson will talk about the limitations of the present space, and I will outline the history of the efforts to uh, satisfy the need for additional space. Then Jamie will identify the criteria for evaluating options. Using those criteria, he will compare the two options that have been on the table. And those two options are expanding the current Canal Street site, the Boyd Building, and relocating the former Bobcation Municipal Building on East Street. There will be time near the end for all the questions you want to ask, and we'd ask you to hold your questions until the end. Before the wind up, uh, we'll be inviting you to let us know what you want included in an expanded library space. So the role of council and city departments. Most of our libraries are in city-owned buildings. Most, but not all. Uh, the Omidi and Dutchford branches are in leased spaces. And, uh, but the other 12 are in city-owned buildings, and the city provides a space to us. In the case of the Bob Cajun branch, there are co-owners, the city and the A. Sheila Boy Foundation. But the library occupies the city portion of the space in that building. So the library board and staff have close working relationships with city departments, and those departments provide many important services to the library. Maintenance of the buildings, of course, uh, but also things like there's a courier system, so if you request any materials from any branch in the city, it can be brought to you uh, at your branch. And that courier system is provided by the city. We're closely connected to council as well. Each year we submit a budget for council approval, and most of our funding is from this source. So, we're in city buildings, and we work closely with city departments and council, but it's important to know that under the Provincial Public Libraries Act, public libraries operate under the management and control of a library board. There are nine on the board, currently three councillors and six members of the public who are unpaid community members who hail from various locations. Uh, Kirkfield, uh, Lindsay, Bill Britton, and Bob Cajun among them. On the next board, which takes over in January, there will be, you know, again, nine members, eight members of the public, and one councillor. Board members apply for positions and are appointed by city council, but the board itself is an independent, incorporated body under the Provincial Public Libraries Act. Day-to-day -day operation and management of the libraries is the responsibility of the library CEO, who reports to and advises the board. That's Jamie Anderson here, and he's a library professional with over 30 years of library experience. The job of the staff and of the board is to ensure that we are supplying the best possible library services for the city and all of its residents. And that includes the 8,500 residents of the Bach Asian areas. So, Jim. Thank you, Jamie. Bob Keach is one of the fastest growing areas within the Port of the Lakes. Um, the 2016 census puts about 8,500 residents within five kilometer radius of the current Canal Street location. By 2023, it's estimated that number will rise to over 9,500 residents. 
By 2028, that number will be over 10,100. Over that 12 year period, that's a growth of almost 20%. Within the city itself, during that same period, we're looking at a growth of about 11.5%. I feel this growth of Bob Cage, this highlights the limitations of the current space. The current ranch size is 1,800 square feet. It is not fully accessible. It is not, there is no dedicated programming space. There's insufficient space for children, for the children's and story time area. There's insufficient space for public computers. Right now, there's just four. There's insufficient space for the size of the collection. Currently, Bob Cajun has 1,400 active card holders. That's about 17% of the population, compared to the rest of the city, which is about 22%. Bob Cajun is our second busiest branch within the system. But the numbers have been static for the last several years because of, I believe, the size of this location. In 2017, we welcomed over 23,000 visitors to the branch who took out over 41,000 items. But because of the size of the branch, they were only offered able, able to offer 145 programs compared to Fenton Falls, which was able to offer 240 programs over that same time period. The four computers were used about 4,000 times during 2017 as well. So the history of the efforts to provide additional space for the Bob Cajun branch. In 2001, after amalgamation, the limitations were, were recognized. The former Bob Cajun municipal building on East Street was proposed as a possible site to relocate to, but the idea was rejected at that time. In 2007, the library hired Day of Church and Associates, uh, consultants with library expertise, to prepare a strategic plan for the library. The consultants confirmed that the Bob Cajun branch was significantly undersized, and that was kind of spurred for the library board. Uh, meeting Bob Cajun needs became one of the board's priorities. In 2009, at the board's request, Chamberlain Architects uh, were hired by City Port of the Lakes to prepare an expansion and renovation report for the Bob Cajun branch. And this was to include a site analysis of that Canal Street, the Boy Building, and conceptual drawings for expansion of that existing library space. In 2014, Chamberlain delivered the report with the concept drawings and with some cost estimates. Now, the next step would have been for the architectural firm to prepare detailed construction documents. In late 2015, Council decided to cancel the project because of the cost and because they had other priorities. Much of the money that had been set aside was redirected to roads. Uh, the remaining monies were moved into a capital reserve. In 2016, the Library Board went to Council to request release of some of the remaining money to go ahead and complete construction documents uh, for expansion of the Canal Street site. Council decided not to approve that request at that time, and they asked the board to investigate alternatives uh, to expanding at the current site. In 2017, uh, in response to council's request, the board asked for a feasibility study for the city-owned East Street site, the former Bob Cage Municipal Building. Council approved that release of money for the purpose of analyzing the feasibility and for completing a Bob Cajun Library concept design for the East Street site. Now, just last month, so that's October 2018, the feasibility study, uh, the concept designs, and those cost estimates were completed and turned over to, to the board through through Mr. Chanks. Uh, so at that point, Last month, we had two sets of concept drawings, we had two cost estimates, we had a lot of information to work with. So we could begin to think, well, not begin to think, we could use criteria that we established for making a choice and apply them to those two options. So I'll turn it over to Jamie to explain what those criteria were and to do the comparison with you. In conducting its review of the two building options, the library, library board needed to examine what can be achieved in both projects. 
when you look at the cost of the project, the size of the finished space, we're looking for a minimum of 5,000 square feet. The space needs to be fully accessible. It needs to have dedicated programming and meeting space for library events and for the public to use. Space for a collection of 10,000 items. Additional space for public computers beyond the current four. The amount of parking that would be available, as well as the effect on library service during construction. In looking at the two sites, Canal Street and East Street, I think the, it would be very obvious which is the preferred option. Construction costs for Canal Street estimated at $1.8 million. For East Street, $1.16 million. That is not even two-thirds the price of Canal Street. Size of the project. Canal Street, because of its the lot size and because of its heritage status of the building, the maximum space the library could get out of that space is 3,600 square feet. Because of, because of the heritage status, that includes any sort of building up, so it would have to be a single floor. Um, it would also lead to 25% demolition of that current building. The East Street location would give us the 5,000 square feet that we're looking for. Both options would be accessible, fully accessible. East Street would give us dedicated programming space, Canal Street will not. East Street will give us a meeting room, Canal Street will not. Canal Street will have a, be able to house a collection size of about 7,200 items. East Street will be able to house a collection of 10,000 items. Canal Street will not be able to expand its space for its four computers, it will actually just give proper space for those four computers. East Street would give space for up to 10 public computers. Public hours would remain the same at Canal Street, but working with the city and the service center staff, East Street would allow us to be open to the public 51 hours a week. We would lose three parking spots at Canal Street, down to eight. East Street would leave us with 20 parking spots. Construction timeline at this point is estimated to be between six and nine months for both projects. Canal Street, the library would be closed to the public the entire time of the building project. East Street, their only closure would be during the move, so about a week to ten days. As an advisor to the board, I will be recommending that the library work with the city to relocate the Bob Cajun branch to East Street location. It is the only project that meets all of our selection criteria. But as it is a city-owned building, council does have the final decision on the project. With the feasibility study that was completed this year, um, we received concept drawings, which I'll look, we'll look at here in a few seconds. Um, this is just a quick overhead shot of the building. Um, this space here is the additional space that would be added to the building. Um, it shows the 20 parking spots as well. This is the accessibility ramp that would be installed here. This is a photograph from the Romero Public Library. This library serves a population of 9,000 people. This is a dedicated programming space for the children's area. This is something we cannot do at Canal Street today. This is something that Canal Street, if we expand it, will not be able to do either. This is just a photograph of a children's space in a smaller community. This gives you an idea of what can be done in a, in a children's space. It's bright, it's cheerful, and it's inviting. This is the library, the library entrance. The library would have the entire upper floor. It would be fully accessible one level. There's the accessibility ramp there. The service center would remain in the lower level. Uh, this is a photograph from Ottawa Public Library, one of their branches. This is a smaller community branch, about 7,500 square feet. Um, this just shows you some group study areas, public, public uh, tables within the collection space. Um, this space is flexible. It also can be used for smaller programs, author readings, writer groups, things like, things like that. 
This is the public computer space at the new <coughs> Peterborough, newly renovated Peterborough branch. Um, we would be looking probably to use something similar with, with Canal Street, uh, some sort of bar type seating as well. This is a photograph from Hillsburg Library in Erin. They're part of the Wellington County Public Library System. This is a 10,000 square foot branch serving a population of 10,000 people. A nice comfortable seating area in front of the fireplace. As, as I mentioned, these we have, and we'll be showing them later, uh, we have concept drawings from both this uh, Canal Street as well as East Street. These are concept drawings only, they're not final, final design drawings. All they're doing is putting in, taking a look at what we required and put, making sure there's space for it in the East Street location concept drawings. So we have space for public computers. We have space here to be used for programming. We have a meeting room space. We'll actually have probably two meeting room spaces. We have a universal washroom. When you look at Canal Street, that was done prior to the last change with the building code. It does not include the universal washroom, which would need to be added to that space as well, which would take up another 100 square feet. I believe this is a good news story. I believe the city is in a position to offer the residents of Bob Cage an increased library service, improvements that are needed to meet the population needs for today and in the future. We've recently done a similar project in Onini. We, we relocated the library branch to uh, East, sorry, King Street, um, expanded the location. In the uh, first eight months of this year, compared to the first eight months of last year, the old location, We've seen an increase of 130% in circulation. We've seen branch visits up by 97%. Because of the increased size, size of the space, we've been able to increase the number of programs by 113%. And attendance at those programs have gone up by 161%. I believe the Omini location is, is a uh, unqualified success. We want to know what features you want to see in an expanded library space. We have a survey that's available online and in paper. I believe we have paper copies on one of the tables. As well, the uh, uh, survey will be, paper copies will be available at the Bob Cajun branch. Um, concept drawings will also be at the Bob Cajun branch later tomorrow or Saturday. Uh, the survey is open until December 20th. You can also access it through our website, www. Fourth Lakes Library about CA Bob Cajun Project. Just before I hand mic over to uh, Craig Shanks for, for oh, sorry, just before we open up for questions, I want to hand the mic over to Craig Shanks. Thanks, Jamie and Jamie. Uh, so, from a city perspective, uh, this is a project that you've seen as being on on books potentially for a number of years. Uh, Things have changed over time from a building code perspective. Things have changed over time uh, from the style of service. Excuse me, the, the mic seems to be cutting in. From a style of service that uh, services that are offered in libraries. Uh, so specifically from a standpoint, specifically from a standpoint that uh, the weighting and the bearing load of the library floor has changed. In 2001, uh, there was a potential and a, and a belief that the library floor would have to be, if that the um, East Street upper floor would have to be reinforced to allow the library to move in there. That would not be the case now because of change in how services are offered uh, at the library. So it's much more accommodating to that potential now. Uh, from the standpoint of the existing building on Canal Street, uh, just to put it out there and be clear, uh, because I'm sure there might be questions or comments, uh, there is no intent to, uh, for the city to get into the ownership of that building, uh, for the building to be demolished or go away. Uh, the intent of council, with no firm decision, decision on what it would be moving forward, but the intent would be uh, that it be reviewed to be used in the most, uh, in most and best appropriate and efficient community use manner. So whether or not that's an expansion of the Chamber of Commerce, the expansion of the Boyd Museum, used as community meeting space, 
to accommodate the loss of meeting space at the East Street building, uh, leased out uh, for community purpose. Whatever the cause of the case might be, that is what the city's intent would be moving forward. Uh, we recognize it's a very important building, that it's a heritage building, uh, that there are some very services offered out of that building, uh, outside of the library services, and the city's intent would be to continue to support that moving forward. At this point, we'll open up to questions. Yes. There'll be front stairs as well as the accessibility ramp um, up to the upper level. I've seen those stairs. That's going to wipe up a lot of seniors. There is also, sorry, there is also an elevator that is in the uh, service center, and so it's also from the lower level. Would not address the standpoint of 
the ramp going up at the side of the building, which is currently used by vehicles using either the bottom or the top floor. So that's recognized, and I'm sure the board is listening in here and representing the city, both myself and councillors hear that as well. That's right, because the sidewalk's only on the far side. There's no a stop, stop at, I think it's uh, Mead Street. I think the sidewalk doesn't come down that side. So that's another cost in front of it, right? It would be. Yes. And may I ask another question while I'm on here? Um, I understand Phelan Falls and Lindsay are both in the center of their communities. By putting Bob Cajun's library at that end, that is taking it out of the center of our community. Location 700 meters. 700 meters? Yes. Okay. It's a lot when you're in the And as, I, as my former question has spoken to, it's going to be another cost on top of your 1.3 or 1.6. So we're looking over 2.5 or 3 million to move it to that location to provide the access, not just to the building. But to, to get to the building. Any other questions? Back there? Uh, what services are being relocated from the service building when the library goes in there? And what's the cost to the city of providing services for those people elsewhere? You mentioned that. No city service will, services will be moving out of the East Street building. It, the upper floor, which we would be moving into, is being currently rented by the Provincial Water Service. And uh, I've been there for public meetings as well, so the public needs to that second floor. Yes. Other services. And now, where are we going to get those services elsewhere? The meeting space at the library as well. The city itself will be looking at what, what, to have, what to do with the void space can make sure it stays in that community service as well. So there'll be a cost to, re to renovate the void space. Uh, as long as the city continues to own that facility, which that's the intent, regardless of what's there, whether there's no plans to relocate the library, there will need to be a cost because of the age of the building and the structural integrity of that building. So regardless, there will be funds that are required for that building, no different than there would be for the building that we're in now. At some point, the school will need, the school board will need to spend money on this from a structural standpoint. Um, so again, that's recognized, but Jamie answered it correctly. From a standpoint of uh, existing city services moved out of there, there would be none. There's still room for everything that's in there. Uh, as Jamie mentioned in, his pre in, in the presentation earlier, the, uh, the library hours would expand because the intent would be similar to the Copacon Library Service Center location. It would be cohabitated. So in fact, the service center would move upstairs, but all of the actual operational services, such as fire, building inspector, public works roads, would still remain in the basement. So nothing would move out. The only thing moving out would be Aqua, and they've already uh, given the city notice of their intent to move out. So uh, regardless, again, of whether the library relocates there or not, the city will need to find an appropriate use of that space. Uh, so that ties in with that as well. And if it were to come to fruition, again, the city's full intent is that we would ensure the utilization of the existing building on Canal Street for the best community use. If that's meeting space, again, I can't speak for council, but I've been with the city for a while. I, work, I attend all the council meetings. I know uh, that this council, previous council, I'm pretty sure the upcoming council uh, all has a firm intent to ensure that uh, community use of city buildings is available and community made, meeting space is made available as well. I, I think last time on the round there was some discussion about the fact that the, if the library moved from the district building, that the space where it went, it went back to the voting foundation, not to the city. Is that correct? <coughs> If I understand correctly, the question was the existing uh, building, the library is it in the Boyd building? If the library moved out, would the ownership revert back to the Boyd Association? Was that the question? No, 
that's right. That's what I understand. Frank, well, that was the question. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, my understanding is no, that's not the case. It's been reviewed legally, uh, and there would be uh, no mandate that states that if the library moved out, we would need to revert back to the to the uh, association. That being said, as I mentioned earlier, if the Boyd Museum uh, was choosing to expand their space and services, uh, I have a pretty firm belief that the city of Fort Lakes would be interested in that, having that discussion with them because it's recognized that that's an excellent service, it's an excellent location for that service, and that if more space is required and we've got the space for it, it's probably a good fit. So I can't say that that would happen. I can't even say that the H of the Boyd Foundation would be interested. But if they were, the city would be interested in having that discussion with them. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, I just wanted to speak a little bit for youth, which I am not one. <laughs> but um, I've been working with uh, some youth groups in Bob Cajun. We've got 400 kids at school, approximately. And there's not much programming running anymore for youth. And I think it's really, really important that we provide some programming. There's a lot of children here that need extra programming other than school that don't get it through uh, hockey and uh, other um, paid programs. So I think it's really, really important that we think about the youth here too. And I understand what Betty Ann's saying about um, having a library not central, but we have a senior building that's when you're over the other side of town, we can't have those things right in the center. So I, I just uh, think it's maybe good to expand the horizon and think for the future of the kids that are here. Thank you. Thank you. 
I think some of the other people that were with me at that time could maybe attest to that too. So that's just an observation more than anything. But everything else, I use a cane and that's treacherous going on today. We'll just make a quick correction. There's five computers, not four. <laughs> okay, well, how many are there was four? Thank you. Uh, so at the current time, the proposal and the plans do not account for that. I am sure if there is a need to, our planning department, uh, the consultant and the design engineers that would put together the detailed drums would take that into account and would make those recommendations as well. Uh, so again, I, right now, the plan is no, but understanding their conceptual plans. And if the, uh, the concern is real, and I'm not doubting it, but if it is, it would be certainly something that the city would look at. And, and I would go on just to sort of go back a little bit on some of the other comments about accessibility as a whole of the facility, uh, recognizing some of the concerns that have been made about the steepness of it. And if, if that can't be addressed from a walkway standpoint, I can't commit to saying that it's feasible, but what the city would look at doing is if there's a way to open up basically the corridor from the entrance into the service center on the lower level of that facility, to the lift elevator so it could be utilized during off hours or library hours as compared to what the service center hours are. So if that's something that can be accommodated to make sure that that is available from an accessibility standpoint as well, the city would have no problems looking at that to determine if it's feasible and what it would take to, to make it come to life. So again, I can't say that we, would, that we could do it for sure because we're not even sure it's feasible, but we can look at that 100%. Yes. Where's the money coming from? <laughs> we have a capital project. <laughs> Currently, there's, I believe, about $250,000 remaining in the reserve from the original project that the council um, put aside. I believe there's also about $300,000 that's accessible through developmental charges. Um, the rest would come out of capital requests to the city. Yes. Um, can you talk a bit about the programs you're dedicating space to? And also, are you taking the parkway at Shea Park? Are you going to be using that down here? Mm -hmm. So there's a question about the Shea Park plan uh, adjacent to it, and whether or not we can be taking it away. Again, right now, no. Uh, this, this concept does not show that. The only way there would be any changes to that parkette is if there was a requirement from either a road standpoint or a sidewalk standpoint to allow access to the building. So that's not part of the plan right now, but if it's needed to be reviewed, we would look at it. From a sidewalk, if it's just a sidewalk, it would be more of an addition to the park, to the parkette itself, it wouldn't take away from it. But if a roadway was needed, we'd need to look at that. The other question was about programming, so I'll let Jamie answer that with the microphone. Um, some of the program that we'd be looking at for for uh, Bob Cage, and we'd be trying to expand them on the youth program, children's programming, especially to uh, toddlers before they're into school. Um, but also we'd be looking to expand seniors programming as well. Uh, we've just started a sewing program at uh, um, Fenwick Falls um, that's been quite successful, and I think they just started with a, a beginner's quilting course uh, as well. Uh, that space, I mean, we just use a sewing machine that we brought over to uh, Bob Cajun, the, the idea is it'll move around. Um, we've got multiple uh, little, what we call maker's kits. Uh, they go out to the branches. Uh, they have small robotics kits for children to learn how to use, do robotics, do computer programming, um, a variety of things like that.
Victoria and myself is to distribute supplies library service to everybody that lives in Bob Cage, all 8,500 residents. We, we do try to accommodate everybody as much as possible. We do have um, delivery service that we started in Lindsay. Um, we are also looking at a delivery service, maybe moving that out to for other shut-ins and people who have trouble getting into the library on a regular basis as well. At this point, we're just doing and looking at it in Lindsay. We're working with a couple of the care homes um, and working with the French group there. Uh, I don't know when we'd be thinking about doing it in Bob Cage. Well, I realize I'm only one person, but I think there are others that have to be Here. 
who are listening to your concerns. And we're, if we talk about this, this is not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next month. We're probably talking about the time we go to council, money's released, all of these plans are, are created, and we take account of all these concerns and try to address them. By the time the actual work is happening, we're talking, Mr. Shanks, 2020 at the earliest.
This is for you. <laughs> I'm wondering if you could just give us a bit more information on the expansion of the current location. Yeah. Um, what's the information that you're looking for? Of where, um, how, what end of the site then? Um, it would be most of the expansion, my understanding, the concept drawings would be into the parking lot. Um, so it would raise the floor of the art room it would push into the parking lot and kind of just square off the back of the building. So the art room would still be there? In some form, yes. Maybe there was a, a third option and that might be, well, we don't want to spend money the way it is now. Everybody's happy. You know, location, location, location is the most important thing for a restaurant or a library. And everybody, I'm sure if I said how many people are happy with the library where it is now, how about raising your hand? Well, that gives you an indication. Um, if he expanded, But maybe for now we don't have to expand. We can all be happy with the you know, location where it is. And I think that might be the way to go. We'll save some money. And the librarian people will be able to have an extra cup of tea. <laughs> be 1.6 million dollars. Yeah. Fill some potholes with that money.
So uh, this is more to the counselors who are here than anything. Um, I think that libraries are, are really sentences for communities. And um, we have the opportunity here to make something that's really, you know, wonderful, apart from what it is already, whether it be in the old center or the new location. Um, I really want council to take heart that Bob Cage needs money for this project. Uh, and, you know, incorporating these designs, um, looking at environmental uh, work, this could be a real, something very unique to for the lakes. And I think that we should really take that to heart to council, please. Because people here are telling you that they want something special. And that's what libraries should be. So please take that to heart. Thank you.
expansion into Shape Park. If there is a requirement to alter Shape Park at all, yes, that discussion would take place. I'm the Director of Community Services, the largest division of Community Services is Parks, Recreation, and Culture. So that park act is with us, and those communications with Port Society take place as in all communities. So that would take place. There would be communication with all the stakeholders that would be impacted. And when is construction going on? What happens to Shape Park? Will it be affected by construction site? So the, uh, the question for those that are in here was, if this happens and there's construction to take place, would there be impact on Shape Park? And as this is just conceptual, there is no plan yet for detailed design drawings for construction and what areas they would require uh, to house and to mobilize those things. And if there is no expansion into Shea Park, I wouldn't imagine that there would be any impact on it. Uh, if there was a need to house or mobilize into Shea Park, that would be part of the plans and those discussions would take place with all the appropriate stakeholders. So, do you have a few more questions? Uh, Bob Cajun has been long uh, uh, known as a tourist area. And um, uh, we, what are we doing to these tourists by moving this facility away from their accessibility? Currently, right now, sorry, um, we have tourists coming through the summer. Uh, it's not a large portion of people who use this facility. It is mostly residents. Are there any other? 
This will be the last question. I'm really interested to know if you're just going with this big is better. Because we, most of us who have been in association with the city of Portland States, know that big is isn't always better. I'm not recommending the site because it's bigger. I'm recommending the site because it meets the needs and the future needs. Yes, it will. 1,800 square feet does not satisfy any or very few of the needs current. 3,600 square feet still will not do that. We'll have meeting space still available in that space. As well as the building will still be available. So that also will be a space that will be available for meeting groups and things like that.
So two parts to that one. The quick one is that the former pool park home which really is part of this meeting, but there is a decision unit within the capital budget for council to consider for paving that parking lot this I year. Know Moving on to this actual meeting, so ask, requesting the city to actually look at the costing to provide whether additional roadways are needed or uh, additional sidewalks. Again, that's, to be quite honest, it's a different department, so I can't 100% speak for it and say it's there. But what I can say is that if the library board wishes to have that, and if council wishes staff to get that, and again, there are council members here that have listened to it, then they would request that of staff and that would be provided. Before a decision is made, we can bring it back to the village. Again, this is conceptual plan right now, and as both James have indicated, uh, there will be a plan to go in front of council. No decision has been made. Council does have the final say on it. So again, it's conceptual right now, and if the decision is to, to uh, proceed with getting those costs, then basically council would direct uh, staff to do that, and the board may in fact request council to direct staff to do that. But I can't speak on either one of them. Both parties are here listening, and I'm sure if something's warranted, both parties would uh, take that into account and consider it. It's 20 past 8. Are there any other green questions that I can try and answer? Okay. Before you go, um, we have the, the wooden table at the back are the paper surveys. You can fill one out, leave it here with us this evening, or you can drop it off to Bob Cage and Branch. Yep. Um, and also, we have a few stations set up by the, uh, um, the tables there, looking for what sort of features you would want to see in an expanded space. So please leave your feedback there as well. Um, and Craig wants to say one I just quickly want to thank the council that is here, because they're the ones that will make the decision and they're here again, so good for them for being here, thanks. I want to thank all of you for being here, for me because from a city perspective, again, the city was more on projects that are for the benefit of the community, so it's important to hear that. Uh, so thanks to you for being here, and most importantly, thanks to Jamie and his staff, and Jamie and his board, because they've been very open through this process. As a city perspective, uh, it's very refreshing on my end to be able to work with the board and work with staff uh, that are bringing these things forward and are easy to work with. It's been, they've been extremely patient because you saw the timeline from when this began. And truly, whether you agree with whatever the end of the decision is, the process to get there has been the correct process. And it's because of the board and the library staff that, that this is taking place. So thanks to everybody here for all those various reasons.